So this is a maintenance talk for uh, Argo project, and uh, today we're going to talk about application set. So that presentation title is Mastering Application Set and Advanced Argo CD Automation. And uh, I would like to do a quick introduction. So my name is Alexander Matyushensev. I'm a co-founder and chief architect at a company called Acuity. And also I maintain Argo CD for like seven years, and I'm a lead of Argo CD project. And so uh, today, we are going to talk uh, about application set. So, uh, not sure how many of you are Argo CD administrators and run Argo for your company. If you are doing that, that talk is for you. Uh, and others can learn about application set and decide if you should use it or not. And so, here is uh, today's agenda. I will first describe why application set even exists and what problem is it trying to solve. And next, I want to introduce solutions that uh, we maintainers team and end users created to solve this problem. And my main goal here is to give you options and kind of give you a heads up so you can decide if application set is applicable for your case, or maybe you should consider a different option or maybe a combination of possible solutions. And then finally, a uh, very, very quick uh, brief overview of application set features and uh, a real life application set to give you a taste of what are you going to get into if you decide to use this tool. And uh, with that, we can start from explaining why application set exists and what it does. So if you are a platform administrator and you install Argo CD for the first time for your organization, that's usually how Argo CD UI looks like. So it's shiny and new, it has one sample application that works, and you give it to your end users, developers, and they start playing with it, and uh, in a couple months, <coughs> it looks like that. So I'm not sure if you can see you know, the screenshot, but it's actually a real screenshot where I just replaced the URL and application names for security reasons, but this instance has close to 8,000 applications, and some applications are broken because of misconfiguration, some actually working and deploying uh, infrastructure to production. And this is not abnormal. So what we learn from our own experience of using Cargo CD and uh, from end users that applications are very convenient uh, because they give this nice grouping, logical grouping of pieces of infrastructure that we manage and the more applications we have, usually it translates to more kind of usability and predictability of changes in infrastructure. So on the left side of uh, this slide, I have use cases that explain why we do it. So uh, application developer teams create uh, applications that deploy microservices into different environments. Platform administrators create usually a lot of Argo CD applications to deploy core services to all the clusters. There are some automation usually running that creates and delete applications for testing purposes. For example, when pull request is open, we want to preview changes, run a small application and then tear it down. And so uh, basically this is all great, but if you're a platform administrator, it, cre it creates a problem for you. So you are now responsible for a very large number of applications which are not persistently stored anywhere else except uh, its CDE database, which is powering Kubernetes. And so you're kind of responsible for very useful information and you would need to either set up some backup process or maybe really take care of your its CDE database because if it disappears, you will be responsible for recreating configuration of your whole organization, which is not ideal. And so we've been Kind of fighting with this issue for many years and come up with several solutions that works well and I want to present them one by one so you can make a right decision. So the very first solution uh, is not really involved in GitOps. Uh, it's uh, rely on Argo CD, CLI and API. And even though it might not sound ideal, it actually proven to be working really well and supports a very large organization. And I will explain in detail why it's so appealing. Uh, so one of the reasons why <coughs> a lot of users like it this way 
uh, like to use CLI is because Argo CD usually already integrated with some kind of CI pipeline that drives environment promotion. So the typical use case is you have QA uh, staging and production, maybe folders in the Git repository, and CI pipeline make changes and run Argo CD CLI to trigger sync uh, when the change is made in the Git repository. And so what we found is really easy is to create an additional step that creates Argo CD application right before running sync operation. And uh, what's important is you can just use this absurd flag. Hopefully you can see it. And it gives us this added potency. So absurd means update or create, update or insert. And surprisingly, this simple approach worked really well for very big uh, companies who we worked with. So it's kind of questionably GitOps because it's stored in, in, at least it's stored in Git. And so if your control plane disappears and then you recreate it tomorrow with no applications, the team probably would not even notice because they can run deployment pipeline as usual and it will recreate applications and proceed with the deployment. And it's very kind of dynamic and automated because teams can self onboard without talking to you, without uh, adding any work to you. And so experience is not bad. And the only disadvantage is it's not declarative. And what that means is you never know what applications are you even supposed to run. Maybe you have some leftover applications on your Argo CD. And yeah, and that's obviously a disadvantage. Uh, so we kind of listen to this feedback and come, come up with another approach that even has a name. <coughs> it's called App of Apps. And I'm kind of, I just took credit for it, but it really came from open source community. So we just learned from end users that they create Argo CD applications that produce applications in our Argo CD namespace. And uh, that is possible because Argo CD settings are pretty much all stored in Kubernetes. And that's why it's naturally very easy to ar use Argo CD to manage itself. And uh, using this approach, you get fully GitOps uh, solution. It's totally fine to just kill your Argo CD instance and recreate it from scratch with one kubectl apply command, which is very convenient. So it's very declarative. You have a list of your applications available literally in a file. And uh, the only problem is it's really not user friendly because you would have to ask your end users to make changes in a file, send a pull request, then you have to approve it. So it's kind of work for both uh, sides. And uh, yeah, and so that's not ideal. And there is a simple improvement that you can make is to use templating and simple tool that could help is Helm. So idea is very simple. You can just use Golang template to produce applications and move this piece that's dynamic and kind of specific to each team into values.yaml file. And it makes life much easier. This way you can manage a single file that has kind of way more readable, readable list of applications, but it's still not ideal because you need to still maintain this file, still go through the same process. And uh, we know from experience that uh, the use cases I mentioned before requires some data that is never sitting in the same repository and it, it's kind of spread it in different sources outside of Git repository. And basically I just described all the reasons why we were not satisfied with available solutions and it inspired us to create a new project or new tool for Argo CD called Application Set, which is now part of default Argo CD installation. And it kind of tries to have, you know, cross all the requirements that we have for a good management, uh, application management solution for Argo CD. So um, Application Set is fully GitOps. It's literally a custom Kubernetes resource stored in a Argo CD namespace. It's fully declarative. It produces applications reliably uh, based on information available in Argo CD. And it's fully <coughs> automated. 
which means once you create it, you can forget about ever changing it again. It will just keep creating applications based on a convention that you kind of defined in, in a Argo CD application set spec. And um, to give you a better understanding of what it is, I want to use comparison with Helm. So it's literally a Helm that a simple Helm chart that only can generate applications. And instead of manually maintaining a values file, you can configure a source of those values for application template. And the sources supported in application set are very specific to the most common use cases. So use cases such as creating applications for clusters or following some convention in a Git repository and create applications for each directory. That's literally what application set can do out of the box without you, you know, thinking about it. And you just need to configure instead of develop uh, the solution. So on this screen, I have a template that is very similar to template in a Helm chart. It just uses goal templating and it has some features uh, such as a Sprig. It's a library in Go where you can do some string manipulations. And generators I want to cover in more details. Uh, and main idea where I'm leading to is where I can show you where application set is really easy to use and where you have to kind of struggle a little bit. So the simple case is if you want to implement a use case that is just supported by application set. Uh, one of the most common use cases, actually the very first one, is when you want to automatically create applications for every cluster connected to Argo CD. Or if you want to delete applications once cluster is disconnected. And uh, to do it, you can use a generator called clusters. And what it does is it just gives you a little bit of settings where you can uh, specify which clusters you want to target. So you might say, I want to create applications only for my staging clusters. A staging means cluster has a label that is, look like, looks like it's staging. And then it will automatically notice when clusters are disconnected or changed or, or created or connected to Argo CD and it will produce applications based on uh, what clusters it have. And uh, as you can see, there is not much room for even error, error because it's kind of straightforward. All you have to do is provide a label that you want you know, your applications to be uh, targeted to. Uh, next example of a simple generator is a Git generator. So idea here is, let's say you want to create applications every time when your end user developer creates a new directory in a Git repository. Or another example, cluster addons. As a cluster administrator, you might say, okay, every time I create, let's say, Grafana in my cluster addons uh, repository, I want to create Grafana application in all of my clusters. And that's what the Git generator for. So also very simple and not much work is needed to use it and not so difficult to make a mistake, not so easy to make a mistake. And finally, we have list generator that supports kind of one of use cases. If you have a dis requirement to create application based on no convention, you just need it. So you can manually define a list of values for your template and that will do the work. And so all those three solving three most important use cases. And uh, as we kind of developed application set end users started to use it more and more and they come up with the requirement to combine different generators together to address more sophisticated use cases. And uh, we've got so-called merge and matrix gen generator that let us do exactly that. that they allow to combine different generators together and it enables way more use cases that we didn't think of. And we've got this. So um, a bit more YAML, uh, which allows us to use application set to implement a use case that we didn't think about. 
And this is actually actual application set generator. You can call it real life application set that which people use to uh, automate add-on management in clusters. And it will take me some time to go through each and every generator and how it works. So I, I will have to just describe what it does. Basically, it lets you have a Git repository where you define a set of add-ons and you have ability to customize add-on configuration based on labels on a cluster. So you might label your cluster and assign it to environment and then this gives you this flexibility that if you decide to move cluster from environment to environment, it will automatically, the add-ons deployed to this cluster will inherit the right set of settings specific to environment or production. It is also possible to support snowflake clusters, so you can have uh, just a cluster that you chose to make different, and you can, without any changes in Argo CD settings, you can just manipulate your Git repo and create a directory specific to this one cluster, and it would get the right set of settings for add-ons on that cluster. So it's, it's flexible. This is great. We gave a talk about it last year, I think, at KubeCon, and the feedback was kind of, it's amazing, but it is hard. And uh, so left is, it's not a quote, but it's like a summary of community feedback uh, that kind of, as a, as a high level, uh, application set became a very powerful tool. It's literally let you kind of write a little application, uh, which is pretty complex, and the tooling to do it is kind of lacking. So it's hard to troubleshoot errors. If something is not working, it's not easy to find why it is not working. It is difficult to make changes in production because imagine you have those amazing application set generating add-ons and then you decide to customize it, and by mistake you delete add-ons from all of your clusters. So it's kind of a um, pretty expensive mistake. And it's just hard to get this logic right. So I was working on this application set for some time, and it took me like several hours to do it, to get what I needed to do. And now I'm at the point where I wanted to give you this like summary of the solution so you can make a decision which approach is right for you, and is it worth to use application set, and does it worth to do it now or later. And here is my subjective uh, way to make this judgment. So one, you know, one lesson that we've got was that organizations are using Cargo CD so, in so many different ways that it's just hard to give a unique recipe. And so instead of trying to decide for you, I'm, I have these like hints that highlight advantage of every approach and gives you a gotcha that, you know, a problem that you might run into if you choose to use this approach. And so high level, if you choose to use CLI and API, it's really safe choice. Like you will get what you need because you have programming language that has amazing tooling. I mean, it most likely is going to be bash, so not necessary, super amazing, but definitely flexible, and uh, you probably have experience using it, so you can get what you need, but you will have to work to get it done. And this is often a very good prerequisite for a big organization, so if you want to be safe, and you really you want to, you know, be sure that you will support any unusual requirement, it's a great choice. And so, uh, Next is App of Apps. It's also a very safe choice. For sure, you're going to get what you need. Debugging is, you know, very simple because you have to, at worst case, you have to debug a Helm template command or you're just dealing with a file, but you're sacrificing end user experience or developer experience. Basically, you would be asking your developers to uh, do that work for you and follow a certain convention uh, that you want to use. And finally, application set, trying to get you both of the both of the uh, best of the both worlds. So it will most likely get to where you need to be very quickly. You don't have to invest a lot of time. 
and your developers will be happy because it's automated and applications just magically created. The only problem is if you're unlucky and your use case is not supported, then uh, you will have to uh, spend some time trying to get it done. And next is I want to I want to give you hints that hopefully will help you. And uh, next, I have some good news that it's improving. And finally, I have, you know, even better news about what's coming next. So, couple tips for uh, today. If you're using not the most latest Argo CD uh, and you are dealing with application set, uh, so I have two kind of suggestions for you that maybe not common common sense. So, one, um, feedback we've got from end users, and that's how, you know, we've got an improvement in application set is we are communicating any errors uh, that application set encounters when it tries to generate applications in conditions. So this is as user friendly as it was as of 2.12 uh, version of Argo CD. So you can run kubectl, get upset, and get the YAML output. And then in the condition, application set generator params error, that's a long name. In the message, you will see what went wrong when it tried to generate uh, an application. And unfortunately, if result of generated application is just not what you expected, you would have to uh, just keep modifying application set and, and see what happens. Uh, Another bit of information which is available for you is in Argo CD application set controller. So I guess if, if you're working with application set, it's worth remembering name of this uh, stateful uh, deployment, sorry. So it's available inside of Argo CD namespace and uh, you can use kubectl logs command to get more bits of information about what application set tried to do to generate your applications. And I realized that this is very two basic advices. And I guess the reason I'm saying it is because I want to communicate with you that that's really what we have uh, for application set, or at least we had it. Uh, we didn't have too much to help with troubleshooting. And uh, maybe one reason is why it is this way is because application set is for administrators. So not so many users actually use it. It's typically administrators of big Argo CD instances that requires a lot of management uh, automation. And for some time, uh, that's the tooling we had. And finally, in a recently released uh, Argo CD version, we've got two additional commands and we have planned to improve the situation. Uh, so the first one is uh, we have uh, Argo CD CLI, as you might know, that help us manage applications and application sets. And there is a create, Argo CD upset create command that allows you to create application set. Now it has a dry run flag, which is pretty much can be used as a linter. So if you have a application set stored in a YAML file and you want to verify if it even makes sense, if you have any like spelling mistakes or indentation errors, you can use this uh, dry run flag and you will get an error back if application set is invalid. And that's an improvement. Um, and the next command that we added is Argo CD upset generate. It's kind of one more step forward that let you preview list of applications that application set is going to generate. And it is useful first because this way you can test it much quicker. The iteration is much easier. You don't have to kubectl apply your application set and then wait a few minutes before upset controller notice the change. Instead, you can just keep running it locally. And another advantage is uh, this way you can test changes in production environments and get more confidence that it's actually going to do what you meant it uh, to do. Um, yeah, and these two features finally available in the most recent Argo CD release. And we got inspired enough to implement two additional changes that are supposed to make life even easier. So first, we want to support uh, local repositories in, uh, in a generate command. 
and local repository, I'm kind of trying to explain it, you know, in this YAML snippet, basically you can reference repo using file uh, protocol and it would try to find repo on your local, on your laptop. And this way it, you don't, you can make temporal changes, kind of mimic what Git repo content you have and see uh, which applications are going to be generated by application set. And then the next improvement that uh, we want to implement is we want to have easy way to test application set. Basically define expected outputs by the generators and expect, sorry, expected outputs by generator and expected outputs by application set itself. So these two things are going to be proposals in Argo CD uh, repository. And I guess one of the reasons to have this talk is we need more ideas and uh, more feedback. If you have, uh, you know, if you know how else you can make your experience with application set better, please let us know. That uh, link is for you to uh, communicate it. And this is, this is it. That's uh, all I had for today. Please give your feedback or ask any questions about application set. Hey, uh, great talk, thanks. Um, so I think I may have missed it in the presentation. Uh, for the CLI approach, mm -hmm. the takeaway is that it, it takes work. Um, could you, like, I guess a job is work. Could you enumerate a little bit more like the, spe the specific con of that, like what the work is that's, that's not good? Uh, CLI, oh, CLI approach. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because it kind of seems like you sang the praises mm -hmm. of it throughout the whole presentation and then just said it, take, it takes work. I, there must so, be something there, yeah. Yes, the, the, the issue we had, I was basically part of a team that was responsible for Argo CD, and we were needed some way to make sure we're not going to be screwed if we lost, lose our Argo CD applications. And so we just advised our teams to use this approach mm -hmm. so they know that those applications are not will be recreated in case of a disaster. But we also knew some teams just create applications using click ops, and then we had no answer for them. So I guess my, my summary is this approach will save teams who use it, but there is no guarantee someone else is not creating applications in a different way. And then another problem is, so we know that there are 100 repositories that creating applications this, in this way, but only way to know for sure is to trigger all those pipelines and see what's created. So basically you never know at any given state, like, are you even running expected set of applications or maybe there are discrepancies? Yeah, and in, in the presentation, I was trying to say that it's not declarative. It's kind of, you have a distributed algorithm that creates applications, but it's really hard to run it. Yeah, so aud auditing is very, very difficult, essentially. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, oh sorry. So generators are pretty useful, and uh, it's good that we can have a more than one kind of generator at a time. Mm -hmm. Although um, more often we use a dynamic branch, like a release branch, to deploy, but I do not see that you can have the branch as like variableized with the help of generators. Do you see that is kind of like a feature flag mm -hmm. which is going to come up? And my second question is, um, I think there is a GitHub issue as well for that. Um, what if you delete an application set? Mm -hmm. It basically tries to delete all the applications underneath that. Mm -hmm. uh, tried using a couple of things like finalizers and all, but nothing actually worked out. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you can talk about that a little bit. So I think uh, the reason why branches were not supported because it used to be considered like anti-pattern. At some point, like we really, we are advocating not to use Git flow to manage, uh, to mimic environment promotion, you know, ch uh, changes between environments. But it kind of changed recently when this, there is a new pattern called, called rendered manifest introduced. And so that's, I think that opens the door to support branches as a, you know, Git generator would look for branches. But honestly, I cannot promise. At least I see a way, I see a reason why we sh maybe should support it now because a rendered manifest is kind of a different topic, but idea that you would 
generate your manifests into a branch, and that branch can be an input, you know, for uh, to, to create applications. Uh, and the second question uh, about I know that it's possible to configure if application set is going to create parent-child relationship between applications. So you can disable uh, application. You know, basically, you can say that application set should create applications. And then you can safely delete application set and it would not touch applications. It's not perfect because we're kind of losing this automation and in 2.13, sorry, in, in next upcoming release, but it's already available, there is a feature that let you uh, require Argo CD to ask for manual confirmation before you delete resources. And that was, it's, a, it's maybe a month old or two months old feature idea that you can annotate critical resources like namespace or even Argo CD application itself with the, uh, a special annotation that force Argo CD to literally stop before it attempts to delete it and ask for confirmation. And confirmation is usually a button click in the UI or a CLI command. That, so that's the only feature I see can, can help with this request. Yeah. And it, it was inspired by application set as well because we had customers who uh, there was no bug. Application set did what it was supposed to do, but they messed up and slightly changed it. So it deleted application and recreated it. And it recreated a production environment which caused the downtime. So with this new feature, it would not happen because there would be like a human would have to say, yes, I do, man, I, I do want to delete this application. Okay, thank you. Are there, are there plans to um, expose the app sets in the UI? Uh, I think it's, it, it is uh, definitely on the roadmap. And the main reason why it's not there is because, you know, it's like I kind of explained it in, as part of this presentation. It is, uh, it got powerful and we like behind on tools to make it like user friendly. And so the, we like few steps behind, first we need to address make it enough user friendly so we can expose it to developers. Next, we need to make it project specific, meaning we need to introduce robot access control and that there is a proposal for that. And the next step is to build UI. UI is like the simplest, I guess. Uh, and I think we have one you know, time for, for one more question. Have anti-patterns developed around application sets? There's so much, uh, so many capabilities. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I cannot, say like what's the it's so powerful right now it's, it's like it's meant for power users so we're kind of saying if you use it you know what you're doing and that's why we are not there to define what's anti-pattern what's <laughs> all right i think we run out of time thank you